must have seen the videos which we have sent to you and read the study materials which are sent to you regularly. I hope you don't find any difficulty in solving them. If you do have some difficulties, we will discuss about it later. Now today I have come here to discuss about the chapters which we have already done in social studies. Let us just revise, recapitulate what we have done in these four chapters. Now the first chapter was lesson number one, know your planet. We live in this planet for Earth. It is very beautiful as you know. It is blue in color because it is covered with water. And we have continents and oceans, the land areas, the large land masses are called continents. The, I hope you remember those continents which we have discussed. We live in this continent called Asia and it is the largest continent in the whole world. Then we have Australia which is the smallest continent. We have Africa, we have Europe, we have North America, we have South America, we have Antarctica which continent nobody lives it is covered with ice throughout. Then we have the large water bodies which are called oceans and the name of the different oceans also we have already discussed. I think you have learned it by heart now. The largest one is Pacific Ocean, then we have Atlantic Ocean, then we have Indian Ocean by the name of our country, then we have Arctic Ocean and we have the Southern Ocean of the Antarctic Ocean. So these are the different uh, land masses, the continents and the water bodies, the ocean. Now the shape of the earth as you all know now, it is spherical in shape. But earlier people thought it was not spherical, it is flat and they were scared to, as we had discussed, they were scared to move from one place to another because they thought that they will fall off from the world, uh, from the world and they will lose their lives. So, but later on it was discovered by Macklin, he went around the whole uh, world about three years he took and when he reached the same place where he started off from Spain, it was uh, understood that the earth was spherical in shape, it's like an orange flat at the bottom and top. Now, as I have shown you the globe before in the modern piece, we refer to that, the globe the shape of the earth. But as I have already told you that the globe is, uh, it is by looking at the globe you can get the picture of the earth. Of the earth. Uh, it shows the oceans and the continent in their proper place. But it is a little difficult, isn't it children, to carry the globe from one place to another because it is a big one and you are coming to a school or to other places with the globe. The second uh, difficulty we have in the globe that it doesn't show each and every place. It's not possible to show in that uh, globe each and every uh, place of the whole world. So that's why the globe gives us a picture of the earth, but it doesn't uh, give us the 
Thank <laughs> you. 
the equator which is at the center which divides the earth into two equal halves that is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere and the two points just above they are the north pole and the south pole now the important parallels are uh, lines which run through the earth are equator 0 degree then we have the tropic of cancer that is 23 and a half degree north it passes through India as we have already discussed then the tropic of Capricorn exactly in the southern hemisphere similar line which is 23 and a half degree south then we have the Arctic circle that is muddy in the northern hemisphere it is 66 and a half degree north and we have the Antarctic circle that is 66 and a half degree south and the two points are called the north pole 90 degree north and south pole 90 degree south
they could see the sun rising and setting. They thought that the sun is moving and the earth is static in one place. But it was Nicholas Copernicus who first astronomer who first told that that the earth rotates on its axis. People did not believe him, but later they understood and believed it. So by this we can know we know that the earth is moving around the sun. But earth is moving around the sun also, and while moving around the sun, it is also rotating. So there are two movements taking place simultaneously. When the earth is moving, but it is rotating and moving around the sun. It is rotating and moving around the sun. So there is two movements. That is rotation and revolution. Now, as we know that the earth it moves from west to east. We are looking from west to east. We see that the sun is rising in the east, but actually the sun is not rising. It is in one place. We are only moving, and we see the sun setting in the west because when we come at the end of the day, so uh, that causes uh, this uh, rotation causes day and night. The portion when the earth is rotating, the portion of the earth that is facing towards the sun is daytime. Now the mountains, uh, it covers 
Thank you.